What's up guys? I'm enjoying a little bit of fresh air and blue skies here in the Andes of Ecuador today. And I want to talk to you about the most common mistakes that will lead people to fail at a keto diet and not enjoy it at all and waste their time even trying it. So the number one thing, the first point I'm going to make is the reason most people fail at a keto diet is they don't give it enough time. They try it for three or four days or a week, they feel like crap. And they stop and they say I tried a ketogenic diet it didn't work for me I felt like crap my performance suffered and I couldn't function what's the point of this diet um, now it takes time to adjust to a keto diet you're completely changing over your metabolism you're completely changing over the fuel substrate that's primarily fueling your body and this takes time if you've never been in ketosis before if you've never been in a state of deep ketosis or on a keto style diet, it can take several weeks and even a few months for people to see the benefits and the results from a keto style diet. Now in the very beginning when you dump water weight, it looks like you lose a little bit of weight real fast. But um, during this induction phase, a lot of people will feel suboptimal. You have to realize that there may be a time, now don't expect yourself to feel like crap, but you have to realize that you may feel suboptimal for a short period of time from anywhere between a few days to a few weeks and for some people it can take up to like a month, a month and a half, two months so they really get in that groove and they can feel the benefits of a keto diet. So that's the number one mistake. Not giving it enough time, not being patient. And the second mistake is not knowing what the heck you're doing. A lot of people jump into a keto style diet, they don't know what types of foods to eat, they don't know what types of fats they prefer to eat, they buy a whole bunch of coconut oil and MCT oil, fill their bellies with MCT oil which is gonna upset your stomach and eat nothing but bacon and eggs and this is a completely unenjoyable, unsustainable and very suboptimal way to do a keto diet. So if you want to do a ketogenic diet, you've got to make sure that you're getting all the micronutrients and macronutrients you need. You need to make sure you're getting enough fats in the beginning. You don't want to just eat a little bit of protein and cut your calories to rock bottom eating 800 calories worth of protein and think you're going to feel okay adapting to a keto diet. In the beginning, I usually tell people to not even go into much of a deficit at all. Um, when you go into too much of a deficit and you're trying to switch over to burning fat and you're just giving your body a little bit of protein, it's just not an optimal situation. You don't have enough calories for your body to feel satiated. You're going to go into a stress mode. Your, your stress hormone is going to be elevated and you're not going to be burning lots of fat. You're going to have elevated cortisol the entire time and eating only protein, it's just not going to turn out good. So know what you're doing. Eat enough calories. Don't drop your calories too low. It doesn't mean you need to eat five sticks of butter per meal or chug half a bottle of MCT oil and give yourself the worst diarrhea of your life. Um, that doesn't mean you have to do that. Just make sure you don't cut your calories too low. Make sure your carbs are coming from leafy green vegetables. That's a really important one. You don't want to waste your carbohydrates on foods that your body doesn't need. Now what I mean by that is um, we don't want to have any empty calories in the diet. The way I teach it you don't have any everything you eat should have a purpose everything you eat should have a purpose whether it's towards hitting your macronutrient goals getting fiber in or providing your gut with beneficial bacteria there should be a purpose to every food you eat this is why I always recommend that people eat lots of fresh sauerkraut you can make your own it's really really easy um, fresh kimchi sauerkraut fermented vegetables um, broccoli cauliflower spinach things like this you need these vegetables in your diet. Well, most people do at least. Yes, some people do great on like a zero carb diet. Some people who have severe um, illnesses to deal with sometimes find themselves having to cut carbohydrates very, very low or sometimes cut out vegetables completely. Like my friend Andrew Scarborough who was battling cancer very successfully and very bravely. Um, but for most people, vegetables are crucial. Getting in fiber and vegetables will also help you feel satiated and fill your stomach up so that you don't feel like you're lacking. The foods when you start a keto diet are very nutrient dense. 
They're very calorie. They're very calorically dense, but they don't take up a lot of space in your body. Um, a tablespoon of butter has over a hundred calories, but is this big? A um, hundred calories worth of spinach or broccoli is much bulkier in your stomach. So there's things that happen when you diet, when you start eating less food. If you're vastly overweight, if you have a dis very distended stomach that's very full all the time, these things have to adjust. Your stomach si size will shrink as you intake less food. So it takes time to, to adapt to a keto diet. It takes time to do these things. And you have to make sure you're doing it the right way. So do some research before you start. I've got a ton of videos out there with information for free. Um, if you're looking for coaching or consultations, you can hit me up at www.primaledgehealth.com slash coaching um, or consult with somebody else. If you've got a friend who's been doing keto for a long time, talk to them about it. Figure out what kind of foods they're eating. What kind of foods do they like? Um, don't just jump into it just eating bacon and eggs. You know, Give yourself at least a little bit of variety. Now, I'm all about simple meals and consistency, and I tend to eat mostly the same foods all the time. But it ain't bacon and eggs. Uh, there's much more nutrient-dense sources of macronutrients, such as fish and seafood. They've got a lot of DHA, selenium, and iodine. Um, there's a lot of other sources of food other than bacon and eggs. So broaden your horizons. Figure out what foods you like. Um, vary your fat sources. Make sure you're getting the macronutrients you need from your protein and your fats. And use those carbohydrates wisely. Don't eat two bites of Pop-Tarts for your 30 grams of carbs. It's not going to work. Um, do it smart. Make every single calorie you have count. Make every single bite of food you eat have a purpose. Eat it with intention. I actually have some really awesome footage of some of the tunnels here in the Andes. A couple mountains over that way. Um, there's been myths and rumors in South America of vast tunnel systems that go all through the mountains here and people find entrances to these weird little tunnels all the time um, some of them you can walk right into they're taller than your head with some passages that are really low that you got a duck underneath but um these have been here for a long time actually the Spanish the conquistadors when they came um, believe that the Indians the native South Americans hid a lot of their gold and their artifacts and their precious treasures in these tunnel systems and in the cave systems throughout the jungle in the Andes and um, it was rumored that there was tunnel systems that go all the way through the Andes from the top of Ecuador down to the bottom of Peru Chile and Argentina and these tunnels apparently were rumored to go from the Andes into the Amazon and even some of them out into the coast um, so South America has got an incredibly rich history that's mainly, for the most part, is completely unknown, unexplored, and it's kind of the missing link in the whole um, origins of civilization story. So it's very fascinating being in a place like this, and it's really cool getting to stare out at this at this mountain, which the uh, which the natives here considered sacred for so long. And um, there's some incredible ruins all throughout the Andes, all throughout the jungle that are totally unexplored. Everyone knows about Machu Picchu, but Machu Picchu was just one site. And the only reason Machu Picchu can be explored now is because certain organizations spent millions of dollars to excavate it and to reveal what was already covered by that cloud forest overgrowth. Now there's ruins like this all over the Andes, all over the jungles of Ecuador. And, um, and a lot of them were rumored to be connected together through vast tunnel systems. And when the Spanish came here, the Inca said that they didn't even build these tunnels. They didn't really, they didn't know. They said they were there before they got there. So, very interesting, really rich history. A lot of interesting superstitions about these tunnels and caves. And uh, so I'll show you a little bit of footage of me exploring just a few of these little chambers. I was too much of a wussy to drop down into the big one and, um, and see if there was a tunnel going underneath it. But... Um, yeah, people have actually died in these tunnels. Like people die exploring them. If you go too, too deep into them, there are toxic gases that build up in these things. And um, people do die. So it's a very, very fascinating place. Fascinating history. Check it out. These three little caves. There's another cave right below this one. My buddy's down in there right now. They're going in there. Uh, 
old, they call them Inca habitations, but I don't know if most of these are Inca. Look at that. The rock is very, it's not very solid. It's like mud. Mud in there. ¿Qué tú piensas de este túnel? Puta, este es el de los siete guanos. The siete guanos. There's all these myths about treasures that the Inca hid, but check it out. There's another tunnel right there, and I'm about to go in this one. I'll switch the camera around. Check that out. Yo tengo. There's gonna be a whole bunch of bat shit in here. Let's see what it's like. Hay una entrada a la otra tunnel. So I'm standing on top of this. This thing could collapse <laughs> any moment. There's some bat poop on here, a little bit of guano. It actually smells pretty nice. I'm gonna go see what's below. There's this little tunnel. This one is a little this one smells awful. Wow. Olor muy fuerte aquí. I want to get down there, but I can't have this in my hand while I do it. I can hear the bats. Bad crap all in here. Oh, the bats don't like me in here. Wow. <laughs> It goes around. Beautiful animals. Pero espera, por si, porque no queremos. Por si se tape. Solo es un túnel círculo. You can feel them flying by, the air rushes by your head. Don't want to be too loud in here. So the, there's the first cave I was in, and it's right on top of the second one. That thing could cave down in there anytime. And then there's a drop going straight down, but it looks like this was a tunnel that was covered up by this mountain in the past. It got unearthed. <laughs> Up this hill a little bit, found this little cave. And only interesting thing in here I found is this bone. I don't know what kind of bone it is. <laughs> Grand dinosaurio. <laughs> But it looks like somebody's come up here and dug around and excavated. I don't know, maybe they found something. And this is all they left. Kind of interesting, though. Anyone know what that bone is? Identify this, baby?
It's hard to tell how old it is, but it's been here for a little while. Right, we're on this treacherous little path. And right there, over here, there's a uh, supposedly a cave they just found. They're clearing it out with machetes. Look at that. Just treacherous terrain. It takes me like three times as long as it takes the locals to traverse this stuff. Um, there's these fikey spikes all over the place that just go right through your shoe if you're not careful. We just got attacked by bees. Here's, here's another bee nest. A little hive up here. Look at this thing though. Structure. Pretty amazing. We just came from way up. You can't even see. Just came from way up the mountain. Oh. Been attacked by the freaking bees. Alright, so that's it, guys. Had some fun footage in there. Oh, here's. This is pretty awesome. I love playing with this dog. I haven't really been to, uh, I haven't been bench pressing for maybe the last month because of a slight issue with my elbow. Um, so I haven't been really bench pressing. I've been working a lot, so I haven't really gone into the gym. So most of my workouts are done at home now. And I need to do this more because this is so much fun. This dog just loves it. <laughs> Makes her so happy to play like this. And Ariana likes to watch, huh? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, just playing a little tug of rope with the dog. <laughs> well, there's there's so much you can do around your house. Um, you don't need a gym membership if you want to get fit. Um, you know, there's a lot of options that you can do around the home. And there's you can find equipment on Craigslist. You can find really good used equipment for relatively cheap. Um, and with really minimal equipment, you can get fit. Here's <laughs> this one. I've been kind of playing with this little little move for a while trying to swing the dog all the way around my body. Daisy's dad weighs about 90 pounds, so he's a little bit harder to play with. He doesn't really like playing like this, like she does. Daisy's probably about 55 pounds. She's probably about 25 kilos, I'd say. Um, but she's just tenacious. Such a great dog. She's a pit bull. They're not to be feared. Amazing family dogs. <laughs> Super loyal. And um, just incredible guard dogs. Lots of fun. Just work in the back. You can see you get your whole back worked out with something she like this. Your shoulders, your back. arms. And that's a nice little cardio <laughs> workout. She's so cute. Good girl. She's not even panting. There she goes. You're a good old girl, Daisy. So here we go, trying to perfect the around the body dog swing move. Nice. Well, oh, there you go. <laughs> One day I just got it around three times. But yeah, that's it. It was a it was a fun little hike there up in the mountains, looking through the tunnels and kind of pondering on the mysteries of life up there, the mysteries of human history and the history of this area. Um, even the even the locals are completely disconnected. They don't know what was going on before uh, before the conquest, before the conquistadors came. They're completely disconnected from the history. So. Uh, very fun and very interesting to explore the history of the uh, of the human race and archaeology and anthropology and all that. But yep, check out www.primaledgehealth.com. You can hit us up through the contact form if you got any questions. If you want coaching, check out the coaching section, and I'll see you next time.